friends NEP was adopted in 2020 four years back now it has several interesting proposals that have the potential to change the teaching learning effectiveness in our universities now the policy encourages granting autonomy to institutions provided they have in maintaining high academic standards allowing them freedom to decide admission procedures fee structures and curriculum now many were granted autonomy in the past as well autonomy succeeds only when all its facets administrative academic managerial and financial are accorded now how does autonomy pan out in practice even as we understand that all facets must be there to be for it to become successful friends there is nothing be it finance education business or any other that is not regulated in some way or the other though self regulation is the best so unfortunately we need a swachh bharat campaign that casuals its citizens not to spit in the open however fostering orders and command impedes innovation you know competence and commitment of those involved in achieving excellence so these are some of the thoughts with which i have come to you this saturday hope you will agree with my views and encourage you to send me your queries so we can debate on that in future talks that i have on saturdays now do we have sufficient number of researchers in every discipline do they have adequate facilities to do both fundamental and applied research what level of inter intra multi disciplinary research exists are you know they provided sufficient funding compared with the best in the world are they sufficiently compensated so they remain in the system questions such as these need answers before autonomy delivers now india is a large country with almost 45000 colleges most of them currently affiliated to some 350 or universities in the public domain can we legislate and free all of them of the so called affiliation privileges that a university gives them some of them are so small that they are not even financially viable an institution primarily must be known for its academics the need to promote excel excellence in higher education is certainly important it is argued that iit and iim fare much better than some other public institutions because they were autonomous or they are, they are autonomous the truth however is that you know they are completely centrally funded with enviable financial autonomy not all public institutions are treated similarly for probably 5% of the funds that iits are granted and almost nil financial autonomy they are expected to deliver similarly and when there is a quality metric defined they are all supposed to stand on the same platform probably it's time to cluster institutions on an academic criteria and bestow complete autonomy including the permission to grant degrees the future survival must be on the basis of collaboration not only of academics but of resources as well sharing faculty and using digital content must be made mandatory a national digital platform will be the universal bridge which can do all this now that many of our autonomous institutions are more than two decades you know into autonomy should we not audit their performance so we have lessons for the future many of them were chaired by industry big wigs have they actually delivered on the promises made is this a sustainable model what funding did they bring under the table how has research improved under their watchful eyes so on and so forth very important questions indeed public universities were actually set up to operate as a state within a state which means they were autonomous to begin with 
Any cursory glance at the act under which they operate will signal they are anything but autonomous, except in a few academic matters. Even academic autonomy is abused when a certain unwanted coursework is retained. Otherwise, someone would be required to relearn or lose the job. That said about the public universities, most of the private universities function as management-owned fiefdoms with practically no autonomy either to the vice chancellor or to the faculty. Unlike universities in the West, ours are too small to be viable. Many of them would collapse without external funding, let alone provide quality. Now, universities, when they actually started, had all disciplines of basic and applied sciences. They were truly multidisciplinary. Over time, they collapsed for want of patrons. Social sciences, liberal sciences, and even some basic sciences have closed up due to want of students, faculty, and funding. More importantly, funding. Consequently, multidisciplinary research itself collapsed. None of our institutions lay stress on productization leading to disaggregated research. You know, today we see yesteryear colleges being converted to universities in the private sector ostensibly to promote autonomy and quality. One suspects it is because it provides freedom to increase numbers and function with unbridled freedom as business houses closing courses, departments or starting new ones as they please. Friends, true autonomy blossoms when the mind is unshackled and academic environment is facilitated. This calls for a leader who leads from the front, is committed, passionate, team builder and has great domain expertise, understands the environment and its links with the external world and above all has integrity, honesty and a foresight that is matured with hindsight. That thought, however, would be how many of such stalwarts do we have in the system today? Now with that, let me end this Saturday's episode with a promise to be back the next Saturday with another interesting episode. I'm sure you will like it. Until then, thank you, dhanyavad and namaskar.